Rebecca Donner, All the Frequent Troubles of Our Days, The True Story of the American Woman at the Heart of the German Resistance to Hitler. Dive into the gripping true story of Mildred Fish Harnack, an American woman whose commitment to social and political causes led her to become a key figure in the German resistance during World War II. In All the Frequent Troubles of Our Days, author Rebecca Donner takes us on a captivating journey through Mildred's life, from her humble beginnings and blossoming romance with Arvid Harnack to their eventual involvement in the fight against Hitler and the Nazi regime. This book summary highlights the fascinating tale of courage, love, and sacrifice in the face of unimaginable difficulties, providing valuable insights into the brave individuals who risked everything to stand against oppression and injustice. Unlikely Love, Unshakable Commitment Mildred Fish, a dedicated student from a modest background, found love and purpose in Arvid Harnack, the nephew of esteemed German historian Adolf von Harnack. Together, they fostered a deep commitment to social causes, which would later lead to profound consequences in their lives. Mildred Fish, an academically focused young woman from a family of limited means, worked diligently to earn her bachelor's degree in humanities and a master's degree in English. By 1926, her perseverance led her to a position teaching American literature at Wisconsin University. It was at this university where she encountered love in the most unexpected way. Arvid Harnack, a refined German law graduate visiting the university for a different lecture, inadvertently walked into Mildred's class. That chance encounter had him instantly smitten, and before long, the two were married, with Mildred adopting her husband's prestigious name. Arvid's family background was a stark contrast to Mildred's humble beginnings. He was the nephew of respected German historian and theologian Adolf von Harnack, a key figure in drafting the Weimar Constitution. Adolf's well-regarded influence was such that a building in Berlin bore his name, the Harnack House. Married life led the couple to return to Germany, where both pursued their PhDs, Arvid continuing with law, and Mildred in American literature at the University of Berlin. Upon arriving in Berlin in 1929, Mildred found herself amidst the cultural richness of a European crossroads, with a cacophony of languages swirling around her. However, she soon discerned a darker reality. The economic inequality plaguing Germany became palpable in the sight of homeless and destitute families lining the streets. This instilled in Mildred a deep sense of empathy and recognition of the urgency for social action. It was their passion for social causes that truly connected Mildred and Arvid. In his pursuit of change, Arvid frequently traveled to Moscow, where he served as secretary for a group called Arplan, the working group for the study of the Soviet planned economy. At the time, the Soviet Union's booming economy inspired Arvid and other Germans to consider implementing similar measures to improve Germany's stagnant economy. Little did the Harnacks know, Arvid's association with Arplan would eventually result in significant consequences, altering the course of their lives. Their shared commitment to their causes remained unwavering, demonstrating the power of love and the determination to foster change in an uncertain world. Rise of Shadows in Germany In the early 1930s, a sense of hope permeated Germany as the economy improved and the Weimar Constitution provided numerous freedoms. However, things took a dark turn as underlying tensions boiled beneath the surface. With the rise of the Nazis, writer Mildred Harnack could no longer ignore the brewing storm. She gave her final lecture at the University of Berlin, discussing the struggles of the working class and the troubling ascent of fascism. Though Adolf Hitler was initially considered a joke, the election results soon reflected the growing influence of the Nazi party, setting the stage for the tragedy that would unfold during World War II. As the 1930s dawned upon Germany, a sense of optimism prevailed amidst the wreckage of the past. The Weimar Constitution brought with it unparalleled liberties for its citizens, while the economy steadily healed itself from the scars of earlier hardships. Women found their voices, religious freedom blossomed, and the arts and intellect thrived like never before. Yet, an uneasy tension simmered beneath the surface. Some individuals, such as Berlin-based writer Mildred Harnack, 
could already sense the impending storm. A German writer living in Berlin expressed the sentiment best when they described the extraordinary freedoms as being on the verge of bursting apart. With time, these subtle rumblings transformed into disquieting realizations. By July 29, 1932, Mildred delivered her final lecture at the University of Berlin, her watchful eye on the dire state of the nation. She sensed the shift in the social climate, as the National Socialist German Workers' Party, better known as the Nazis, crept into mainstream consciousness. The downtrodden working class, depicted in literature by authors like William Faulkner and Theodore Dreiser, seemed dangerously close to tipping the scales in favor of fascism. Despite the Nazis' initial meager success in the 1928 elections, an astounding 37% of votes went to them in 1932. This surge turned a once-fringe group into the largest party in the German parliament. Their rallying cry, work, freedom, bread, echoed throughout Berlin, amplifying the sentiments of a populace disenchanted with their economic plight. The German people longed for the comfort of a time long past, desperate to restore order through returning to a more autocratic government. Although many recognized Hitler as a buffoon and expected the rules laid down by the Weimar Constitution to protect them, the once thought fool ultimately managed to circumvent all obstacles. The meteoric rise of Adolf Hitler, however laughable initially, heralded the beginning of a dreadful chapter in human history. Nazi Germany's Chilling Reality Early warning signs about the Nazi Party's intentions, such as Hitler's main camp manifesto, were dismissed as incoherent rants. However, they provided insights into the party's anti-democratic motives, like anti-Semitism and suppressing free speech. The Reichstag fire, alongside other laws enacted by the party, transformed Germany into a dictatorship with Hitler as its Fuhrer. The Nazi regime also saw a rollback of women's rights and freedoms, resulting in job losses and a push for traditional gender roles. Despite the initial dismissal of Hitler's main camp, it revealed the Nazi Party's sinister anti-democratic aims and rampant anti-Semitism. Alarmingly, the Münchener Post published a story in 1932 exposing Cell G, a secret death squad created by the Nazis to eliminate Hitler's enemies. With such unsettling revelations and press ridicule, it's no wonder the party sought to suppress free press and speech. The Reichstag fire in February 1933 was a critical turning point that happened soon after Hitler became chancellor. While the official story stated that an enraged communist sympathizer started the fire, some speculated that it was a deliberate act by the Nazis to further their agenda. The fire resulted in immense pressure on the president and members of the parliament, leading to a majority vote in favor of the law to remove the distress of people and Reich. This law effectively dismantled the Weimar Constitution. Many thought this legislation would only be a temporary emergency measure. However, alongside the decree of the Reich president for the protection of the people and state, Germany experienced a stealthy shift into a dictatorship. Hitler's newly assumed role as the Fuhrer granted him legal authority to silence any opposition and imprison those who criticized him or the Nazi party. Subsequent laws and ideological guidelines continued to change the face of Germany. The Weimar era attitude of female liberation was quickly relegated to the past. Joseph Goebbels, the head of the Ministry for Public Enlightenment and Propaganda, publicly attributed Germany's recent struggles to the excessive freedoms granted to women. He argued that women belonged at home, with their most vital duty being to bear children for their people and nation. This drastic shift led to the loss of over 19,000 jobs for women in the public sector alone. Defying Nazi Regime Through Education Mildred Harnack, an English teacher at the Berlin Night School for Adults, BAG, didn't stay silent amidst the rise of the Nazi government. She incorporated political discussions into her lessons, criticizing the regime openly. Mildred created an extracurricular English club, which evolved to become The Circle, a group that countered Nazi propaganda and was part of the emerging German resistance movement in 1933. Mildred Harnack began her journey as an advocate for change at the Berlin Night School for Adults, BAG, an institution dedicated to helping the working class. 
It aimed to break the barriers of traditional vocational and trade schools by teaching history, philosophy, literature, and science, enabling students to broaden their horizons and escape poverty. Teaching at BAG, Mildred merged her passion for literature and political awareness. While discussing renowned writers like Emerson, Shakespeare, and Dickens, she would also tackle sensitive topics like the rise of Hitler and his Nazi government. Her bold approach resonated with many of her students, who were unhappy with Germany's political landscape. Seeking a more personal and daring platform for open discussions, Mildred established an extracurricular English club. By inviting intriguing personalities from her social circle, such as George Messersmith, who worked at the American consulate, she hoped to foster an environment of intellectual and political debate. Through Messersmith, they were able to get a glimpse of the true nature of the Nazi regime, which he described as filled with psychopath-like characters that defied common understanding. Initially, the club convened in Mildred's apartment, where she lived with her husband, Arvid. However, the escalating climate of suspicion and fear forced them to shift venues in early 1933. In those days, the Gestapo and SS often acted ruthlessly, arresting or torturing anyone suspected of treason, a term that could now be applied to something as simple as listening to non-German radio stations. The couple, though, was undeterred by the imminent dangers. The Harnacks looked beyond the limitations of the English club in their fight against the growing oppression. They expanded it into a covert operation called The Circle. This group countered the omnipresent Nazi propaganda by producing and distributing leaflets that spread anti-Nazi sentiments. They strategically placed them in newspapers, as well as areas frequented by workers like factories and warehouses. The circle emerged as a small but determined force within the developing German resistance movement in 1933. Their efforts against the tyranny of the Nazi regime would continue to evolve, gaining momentum and embracing an international scope in the years to come. The brave acts of Mildred Harnack and her compatriots demonstrated that, even in the darkest of times, the light of resistance shines through education and the sharing of ideas. Defiance Against Nazi Oppression in 1933, Mildred and Arvid Harnack found themselves at a crossroads as the Nazi government rounded up thousands of political prisoners. Despite the risks, especially given Arvid's ties to Moscow, they chose to stay and resist. At the center of the Circle Resistance Group, they strive to inspire people against the growing Nazi oppression through organizing leaflet campaigns. Following the implementation of inhumane laws targeting Jewish people, the Harnack supported many Jewish families' escape by leveraging their extensive connections in prominent social circles. As the Nazi government pursued a campaign of oppression, Mildred and Arvid Harnack were faced with a life-altering decision, stay and resist the Nazis or flee for their safety. Despite Arvid's connections to Moscow, the couple chose to remain in Germany and combat the growing tide of oppression. They positioned themselves at the heart of the circle, a resistance group that organized leaflet campaigns, encouraging the German people to defy Nazi rule. The situation continued to escalate as the government passed increasingly oppressive and discriminatory laws. On September 15, 1935, the Reich Citizenship Law and the Law for the Protection of German Blood and German Honor further marginalized Jewish people by stripping them of their citizenship and other fundamental rights. This expanding marginalization paved the way for the execution of the Nazis' extermination plan. In response to this oppression, the German government established the prototype concentration camp in Dachau, initially intended for political prisoners. In the following years, they expanded this heinous system, creating even more large-scale camps like Buchenwald, Mauthausen, and Auschwitz, as well as women-only facilities like Ravensbrück. Given the mounting stakes, many Jewish families saw no choice but to leave Germany. The Harnacks knew they had a moral responsibility to assist those in need, using their connections to facilitate escape and refuge. By early 1935, Arvid landed a job at the Ministry of Economics and infiltrated the Deutscher Club, a gathering place for high-ranking Nazis. Simultaneously, Mildred tapped into her connections at the U.S. Embassy and the American Women's Club, where she mingled with influential Berliners. Their extensive network allowed the Harnacks to be instrumental in aiding Jewish individuals like editor Max Tau, 
who fled to Norway. Daringly, Mildred and Arvid used their privileged position and social connections to undermine Hitler's plans and save countless lives, valiantly defying the oppressive Nazi regime. In the heart of resistance The circle's influence grew as it faced increased risk and surveillance from the Gestapo during the 1930s. Numerous new resistance groups emerged, such as the Gegner Kreis, Tat Kreis, and Rittmeister Kreis, all with different leaders but similar objectives. The leaflets produced by these groups carry detailed and crucial information thanks to key figures within the resistance. Mildred and Arvid Harnack had to constantly maintain their cover as Nazi supporters, creating tension that even followed Mildred during a visit to the United States. The circle's intrepid endeavors captured the attention of the Gestapo. In 1934, over a million of the group's leaflets were confiscated, but by then, Berlin's resistance landscape had grown more substantial. Haro Schulz-Boysen, an officer in the Ministry of Aviation, led the Gegner Kreis resistance group. Adam Kuckhoff, a former magazine editor, directed Tat Kreis, while John Rittmeister, a neurologist, headed Rittmeister Kreis. These groups occasionally collaborated with Mildred and Arvid and their circle. Despite the unfaltering spirit of the resistance, the risks grew more perilous. In 1936, 12,000 people were arrested for disseminating opposition leaflets, including a couple of recruits Mildred enlisted through her bag meetings. But with passionate members in the resistance, their leaflets became even more insightful. Schulz Boysen leveraged his position in the Ministry of Aviation to provide key intelligence about the German support for Francisco Franco. Mildred and Arvid were constantly on edge as they tried to keep their secrets hidden. They knew every building in Berlin housed a Gestapo informant, often with their identities glaringly obvious. For a time, the Harnacks resided in a building owned by Joseph Goebbels' mistress, Hella Strell. They were also fully aware of the likelihood of their home being bugged, and it wasn't unusual for suspicious workers to visit under the pretext of maintenance. To maintain their cover, both Mildred and Arvid posed as Nazi supporters. Arvid even registered as a Nazi to ensure his employment and access to influential figures. Meanwhile, Mildred feigned support for Hitler as a way to gauge potential recruits for the resistance. This unrelenting tension followed Mildred all the way to the U.S. during a brief visit in 1937. Unable to free herself from the fear of being followed or loyalty tested, she remained guarded during her stay. Upon saying goodbye, a friend observed that Mildred seemed so deeply affected by her experiences it was as if she had transformed into a Nazi herself. Unraveled Resistance As Hitler secretly prepared for large-scale war, disregarding the World War I armistice restrictions, both Arvid and Haro schulz who held positions in finance and aviation ministries, understood the impending danger. The Soviet Union, concerned about its relationship with Germany, sought intelligence by recruiting Arvid and others from the Berlin resistance. Despite compelling evidence of a German invasion, Stalin remained unconvinced due to a non-aggression pact with Hitler and internal purges affecting the Russian intelligence community. Ultimately, an intercepted, encrypted message from Soviet intelligence exposed key members of the German resistance, sealing their fate. Although Hitler maintained a facade of seeking peace, his defiance of the World War I armistice clauses, such as stockpiling arms, indicated otherwise. Observant of Hitler's hidden agenda, Arvid and Haro schulz grasped the looming large-scale conflict. Sensing the danger, the Soviet Union craved reliable intelligence on Germany's intentions. Alexander Hirschfeld, working for the Soviet Foreign Intelligence Agency, requested Arvid to become a Soviet agent. Reluctant, Arvid agreed to provide information independently, without being under Moscow Center's control or accepting any monetary rewards. Eventually, Moscow Center managed to establish collaborations with numerous individuals from the Berlin resistance groups, including Haro. By 1941, German resistance sources revealed undeniable evidence of an imminent German invasion of Russia. However, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin refused to accept it, as he viewed the non-aggression pact with Hitler, and their exchange of resources as signs of trust. Additionally, 
the Great Purge from 1936 to 1938 led to the execution of major senior intelligence staff at Moscow Center, leaving inexperienced minds in charge. This lack of experience would further impact the German resistance. To maintain communication with the German resistance, the Soviets provided portable transistor radios. However, on August 26, 1941, an ill-thought-out move by the new Soviet intelligence director, Pavel Fitton, would seal the fate of the resistance. In an encrypted message, Fitton instructed an agent to check on the radios at three Berlin addresses, explicitly mentioning Haro Schulzboisen, Adam Kuckhoff, and Arvid Harnack. Unfortunately, the Nazis intercepted the message. Although encrypted, it was now a matter of time before codebreakers deciphered it, marking a devastating intelligence failure in World War II and putting the lives of key resistance members at risk. Defying Nazis, Daring Resistance As the war intensified, various resistance groups adopted aggressive tactics against the Nazis, with many attempts on Hitler's life, including the Oster Conspiracy and the ill-fated Operation Valkyrie. With the Gestapo cracking down on prominent members of the Berlin resistance, Mildred and Arvid Harnack planned their escape but were captured and imprisoned with other key figures. The revelations about the involvement of high-ranking individuals like Libertas and Haro Schulzboisen sent shockwaves through the Nazi regime and humiliated leaders like Hermann Göring. During the peak of World War II, Anti-Nazi efforts ramped up as resistors distributed leaflets urging weapons factory workers to sabotage ammunition and bombs. In parallel, some groups heightened their aggression by deploying explosives on railroads. Within the German and Austrian militaries, high-ranking officials like General Hans Oster began plotting methods to assassinate Hitler as early as 1938. These plans earned the name Oster Conspiracy and eventually culminated in Operation Valkyrie. Despite being well-crafted, this assassination attempt ultimately failed when the planted bomb only partially detonated, leaving Hitler with minor injuries. As the Nazis continued to crack down on resistance groups, the country saw a significant rise in executions. In 1935, a prison in Berlin reintroduced beheadings, with over 80 people losing their lives in this brutal manner. Eventually, a steel guillotine replaced axes to streamline the process. Berlin's resistors lived in constant fear of execution, especially as the Gestapo made headway in their investigations. On July 14, 1942, the Nazis successfully decoded a message that provided the names and addresses of three key resistance leaders, making the threat of capture all too real. Mildred and Arvid Harnack, understanding the gravity of their situation, planned their escape from Germany. They aimed to flee to Lithuania, where they would board a boat to the safety of Sweden. Unfortunately, before they could reach the vessel, they were captured and brought back to Berlin. At the Gestapo headquarters, the couple found themselves among numerous other resistance members, including Haro Schulzboisen, his wife Libertas, and the head of the Tat Kreis group, Adam Kuckhoff. As the circles of the Berlin resistance intertwined, the Gestapo began torturing prisoners for confessions and the names of their co-conspirators. While some broke under the pressure and incriminated others, Mildred Harnack remained silent. However, without being tortured, Liberta Schulzboisen exposed numerous conspirators. These revelations, involving aristocrats and trusted Nazi associates, were an earth-shattering humiliation for prominent Nazi leaders like Hermann Göring. Unwavering Love Amidst Resistance as the Gestapo closed in on the Berlin resistance, 76 individuals were arrested and put on trial, including Arvid and Mildred Harnack. The couple's love endured, despite their tragic fate, Arvid was executed, while Mildred was initially sentenced to six months in prison but later sentenced to death by beheading. A letter from Arvid was entrusted to Mildred's cellmate, Gertrude Klaputh, who carried it with her through the war and eventually returned it to Arvid's mother, Clara Harnack, in 1952. The 76 individuals arrested by the Gestapo for their resistance against the Nazis were labeled the Red Orchestra, despite their lack of cohesion as a unified group. Arvid and Mildred Harnack were among these unfortunate souls, and their trial began on December 15, 1942, marking their first reunion in months. Separated and forbidden from speaking to each other, 
Arvid managed to pass on a letter containing his final thoughts to Mildred. In the end, it was Hitler who determined their sentences, having a peculiar belief that women should be beheaded rather than hanged. As a result, most of the accused, including Arvid, Haro Schulz-Boysen, and eight others, received the death penalty and were hanged on December 22, 1942. Mildred, on the other hand, was initially given a six-month sentence. However, Hitler demanded her sentence be reconsidered, and she was eventually sentenced to death by decapitation. As Mildred awaited her execution on February 16, 1943, she handed Arvid's letter to her cellmate, Gertrude Klaputh, for safekeeping. In her final moments, Mildred found solace in a book smuggled in by the prison chaplain, translating a poem by Goethe on its margins. Following Mildred's death, Gertrude was transferred to the Ravensbrück concentration camp, where she worked as secretary to an SS officer. She witnessed the camp's liberation by the Red Army on April 30, 1945, and wandered the ruined streets of Berlin with only her clothing and Arvid's letter in her possession. In 1952, Gertrude, now married with three children, mustered the strength to contact Clara Harnack, Arvid's mother. In her letter, she revealed her encounter with Mildred and entrusted Clara with Arvid's heartfelt message. His letter reminisced about the treasured moments of their marriage and contained a poignant closing, You are in my heart. You shall be forever. My greatest wish is that you are happy when you think of me. I am when I think of you. Rebecca Donner's All the Frequent Troubles of Our Days chronicles the extraordinary life of Mildred Fish Harnack, an American woman who played a pivotal role in the German resistance against Hitler. The book explores the complexities of her personal and political life, detailing her unwavering dedication to social and political change even amidst the ever-growing tumult and horror of Nazi Germany. From Mildred's meeting and subsequent marriage to Arvid Harnack, their struggle to make sense of the rapidly changing socio-political landscape, and their decision to risk everything in the fight against fascism, this powerful story serves as a testament to the human spirit, courage, and the resilience of the countless individuals who stood against the tide of oppression during one of history's darkest periods.